Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is show you that if x follows a geometric distribution with parameter p, then the expected value of x, the mean of x, e of x, is equal to 1 divided by p. So, how do we go about proving this? Well, first of all, suppose we drew up a probability distribution table. It would look something like this for the random variable x. We've got our observed value x, which can take on the values 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Remember, it goes on theoretically forever. And the probability of x equaling x, the observed value here, for 1, getting a success on the first go would be p. For getting a success on the second go, you'd get 1 failure, q, multiplied by the probability of success. For getting a success on the third go, it would be a failure multiplied by another failure, so that would be q squared times then the probability of success, which would be p. For getting a success on the fourth go, it's going to be q cubed times p, and so on. So when it comes to working out what e of x is, to work out e of x, remember it's the sum, sigma, of the observed value, x, multiplied by the probability of that random variable equaling the observed value, x. So what we've got to do is 1 times p, plus 2 times q times p, plus 3 times q squared p, and so on. So therefore, what we've got is e of x equals 1 times p, we'll just put that in as 1p, okay, and then you've got plus 2 times qp, plus 3 times q squared p, and we'll put another one in, plus 4 times q cubed p, and so on, okay. Let's call this equation 1. Now, We've got to work out what this total is going to be. And to do this, it's convenient if we multiply both sides of this by q. So if I do that, I'm going to therefore have q times e of x equals. So if I multiply this first term by q, I'm just, just going to get pq. But I'm going to put that underneath here. Okay, so I said PQ, obviously it's the same as QP, so we'll just put QP there. If I multiply this term with a Q, that's going to be 2Q squared P, and we'll put it underneath this term. So I'm just sliding the terms across, okay, 2Q squared P. Multiplying this term with a Q gives me 3Q cubed P, and I'll put it underneath this term here. So we've got 3q cubed p. And it would carry on like this, okay? And we'll call this equation 2. Now, what I'm going to do is equation 1 minus equation 2. It's convenient to do that, as you'll see. 1 minus 2, what's it going to give us? Well, we'll have e of x minus q of e of x. So therefore we've got e of x minus q e of x. And we're going to have just the p here. Okay. And then we're going to have 2qp minus the qp. Well that's just going to be 1qp or just simply qp. Next we're going to have 3q squared p minus 2q squared p. So that's going to be plus q squared p. Hopefully you can start to see that there's a pattern emerging here. When we subtract these two terms, we're going to get plus q cubed p. And the next one would be q to the 4 p, and so on. Okay. Now what I can do here is factorize the left-hand side and factorise the right hand side. Factorising the left hand side gives me 1 minus q multiplied with 
e of x. And then factorizing the right hand side I can see that p is a common factor so I can draw out the p and we've got 1 plus q plus q squared plus q cubed and so on. Okay so we've got that. Now when I look inside this bracket here we should be familiar with a series like this. If you're doing an earlier module on say core maths you should recognize this as being a geometric series. If we have a geometric series let's say the first term is a and the common ratio is r that is we multiply each term by that value r. The next term, the second term would be ar and then to this we would multiply this with another r and get ar squared plus ar cubed and so on. And if I wanted to know what the sum of this was we normally call it sn. sn equals that sum. Now there's a special case here and that is if that common ratio r lies between minus 1 and 1 then this has a sum to infinity. Sum to infinity, often denoted like this, is equal to the first term, a, all divided by 1 minus the common ratio, r. And this is a result that you should be familiar with if you're doing the sum of a geometric series. Now in this example, that common ratio, the thing that we're multiplying by, is q. Okay, we're multiplying each term by q. The first term, a, being 1. And because q is a probability, it lies between minus 1 and 1. We know it should really be a value between 0 and 1. And uh, if that's the case, then we can look at this formula here. We can say that this is going to be equal to this p here multiplied by a which is 1 the first term all divided by 1 minus the common ratio that multiplying factor for each term well in this example it's q so it's going to be divided by 1 minus q so I'll just put that in brackets and on the right here let's just copy that in again that we've got 1 minus q multiplied with e of x now 1 minus q, do you recognize that? 1 minus q is p, q being the probability of failure. So therefore what we've got here is p multiplied with e of x is equal to and here we're going to have p multiplied with 1 over p and these p's cancel one another out so you've got p times e of x equals 1. So therefore, if I divide both sides by p, it follows that e of x, the expected value of x, must equal 1 divided by p. And that's what we had to show. Okay?